All right, so we're back. So I had to reset everything so that way I can get it set up for the, the vision board. But uh, Cyril's going to give out his information so that way if you guys want to contact him, get some more information, anything that he was talking about as far as uh, the savings, life insurance, all that, he'll give all that information for you. Okay, so um, I'm located at 245 Riverside Avenue, right across the street from Brooklyn Station. Um, I have two bunny ears growing out of my head right now. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that'll help you know, the hairline, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, my phone number, cell phone number 786-402-1525. I also have a, a Facebook business page, uh, Cyril Stubbs Jr. Then you're going to put a hyphen, um, Northwestern Mutual. On my Northwestern Mutual page, you'll be able to find my business phone number, my email. You can shoot me messages. Um, you'll see everything that we cover um, there. You feel free to reach out to me, send me a message. I, as soon as I get on, I'll usually reply within an hour. If you do decide to call me and I don't pick up uh, because I am pretty busy, just shoot me a text message. That's fine. Um, and we're open. Up to, I'm usually there to the office till about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. Um, I get there about 6.30 or 7.30 in the morning, so I'm there pretty much all day. It is by appointment only. Um, so, I mean, just reach out. I'll be here. Any advice you guys need or any tips, you can um, check, you know, Merlin Black, or you guys can also check the business page where – we actually post, I post every day uh, different things, not always regarding money, um, sometimes just regarding life. Uh, so, that's, that's pretty much it. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you guys for allowing us to give a chance to get Cyril to come up here. Next, what we're going to do is going to kind of showcase a vision board so you guys can kind of see. So, a vision board really honestly is just a board. doesn't have to be anything specific. My board is a pegboard. And then as we start talking about the different things, what we're going to do is we're going to add things to the board. Most people, what they use is they grab some magazines. Um, I don't know why you had to get a good housekeeper. <laughs> I got it. S's magazine. Well, we're going to get an average black <laughs> but, magazine. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, but the vision board is really honestly something that you create the board. And once you're done, you can put glitter, glamour, lights on it. RS has lights on it. You can actually take that board, and the whole object of the board is to put the board on a dresser. Put the board somewhere that you're going to constantly, first thing when you wake up in the morning, you see the board. Once you see the board, it's going to constantly remind you to continue to keep track and attacking those goals. So throughout the year, as you start knocking off goals, you just simply whoop, take it off the board. Your whole goal is at the end of the year, you should have a bare board to start all over again for the next year. I've been to several vision parties, um, and honestly, that's the main goal. You may not always get to completing everything on the goal, but what I normally do, like I took my entire board down, what I normally do is I end up, whatever I didn't accomplish that year, I'll turn around and go ahead and try to attack it the next year, hopefully. And hopefully it's not something that just consistently stays on the board and it collects dust. So, um, Couple things when we started talking about money. So we put money up here. I know that's everybody's resolution. Um, I mean, that's the main thing. I couldn't find a bank in one of the books that we had because he talked about a lot about saving and, and marketing and, and not marketing, excuse me, saving and, and building up finances. So what we're gonna do next is, what is it, relationship? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna have uh, Vanessa come up and talk about relationship goals for 20. <laughs> come on, Nessa. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Nessa, the crazy one. Okay, so I know everyone wants to have a better relationship with their partner over the 2018 year. Okay, so I feel like if you look online and you Google and you put in uh, relationship goals for 2018, you'll or 2017 or just any year, you have people with all these huge lists of different things that they want to do. And I look at them and they're all like, crazy unrealistic stuff so i tried to find five real things that i feel like we can do to improve our relationships with our partners throughout the year and then you can always expand on those things and depending on how you and your partner are you can deviate and do things that work better for you okay so number one for me on my list of five things would be communication I feel like communication is the number one key thing that we need to make sure that our relationship is prosperous and I confuse talking with communication. Just because you talk to someone doesn't mean that you're communicating with them. So let's communicate with our partners 
in 2018. Finding the right time to have a conversation is the best part of communication. Okay? Don't just, when you're feeling some type of way, I need to let it off my chest, let me talk about it right now. That doesn't always work. You know, some, go somewhere to it's a quiet place, have a seat, try to get yourself together, and then talk to your partner, communicate with them. That way, you'll have a better relationship coming up throughout the year. Um, the second thing that I have is kick a bad habit. Okay, so as far as habits goes, you might not be a smoker or a drinker, but someone has a bad habit. It can be anything. It could be your partner doesn't pick up his clothes off the floor. It can be um, your you have a small patience with the kids, so you're going to try to work on that habit. Anything, just a small habit that you can try to fix. It'll better yourself and it can better your relationship, and that's what you want to do. Now, always better yourself to better your relationship. Um, three, learn something new together. So I always feel as if <laughs> it's my bad habit. So I'm putting kick, on kick something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and that is my 2018 I have down kicking. I'm not drinking anymore, guys. I'm just gonna stick to the week though. Woo, oh, you girl. I am. I'm not, I'm not drinking anymore for 2018. So, yay. I'm trying to be better, guys. So, uh, like I was saying, my third thing, learn something new. So, I was reading how, find, talk to your partner, communicate with your partner, find something that he likes. Then find something that she likes or whoever your partner may be. And then you guys try to learn something together. Okay? And then it'll also make a memory. If you, it'll give you something to look forward to. If you know that you are not a good cook and you know your spouse is not the best cook, then you guys work together, go to classes, learn together, and then you'll have a memory. You look forward to it. So let's try to, uh, you know, try something new together as a partner, and I can guarantee your relationship will go a lot farther in 2018. Um, now, this is one that I'm sure everyone wants to be interested in. It's spicing up the bedroom. Whoa! Making sure. Hey. So spicing up the bedroom. Okay, so in 2018, another way to make a relationship uh, prosper throughout the year is making sure that the sexual passionate aspect of the relationship kind of grows. Um, sometimes the stresses of life and uh, family and jobs and things like that make it hard for you to be able to do those things. Kids definitely can take the passion out of a relationship quick if you have to deal with them, but you can find different things to do. So I think a realistic goal can be what I put was to not have sex in the same place twice in the same week. Ooh, I like that one. So, you know, you have the bed one day, and then you might try it again within the week, and you get in the bed, stop, and say, let's go in the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's something simple like that that can spice up the relationship and keep it going. <laughs> so try to have yes. sex the same time. Now, people say, oh, it's almost impossible to plan your sexual encounters. True and false. Okay, so you can plan, and it also builds anticipation. So if I talk to my boo, and I'm like, hey, I'm about to come tear you up at 5 o'clock when I get off. You know, that builds anticipation, and that can also spice it up as well. So definitely try to do something different, shake it up, maybe a little card, a little letter. Do something simple. I wouldn't wear that. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ooh. Spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> try to spice it up. Try to get, you know, try to get a little something. Oh, wait, talk about, talk about, this is my baby. <laughs> no, wait, let, let, y'all know right now. This is my That's baby. That's not mine. Can you okay. tell? This is my wife's thing. Okay. Just let y'all know. All right, go ahead. And I really ain't that big. We don't, nobody will. Okay. So, no, seriously. But try to spice it up. Whether it's acid candles, maybe some music, something that you normally wouldn't do, and it can make the the passion go a little bit further. And last but not least, and this is my absolute favorite. I got it. Absolute favorite and number one thing. We're gonna keep this going because technical difficulties is the alcohol. <laughs> kick a habit. Kick a habit. Last but not least is uh date as much as possible. That is my biggest thing. It's my number one on my list with children, with two jobs and everything that I'm doing, me and my spouse doesn't get, don't get on to date. And I see that happens to a lot of couples. Definitely. Aww. <laughs> Fear. Fear. 
<laughs> Take time to date, them okay? Fake. It's okay, then. Okay, good. Because they're going to last forever. <laughs> you see that? Take time to date, guys. I mean, I know it's hard sometimes because, like I said, I'm a mother of two, and I got two small, so dating is, like, sometimes seeming like it's not possible. But put the kids to bed, find you a nice movie, get you a glass of wine, and that can be a date. Netflix and chill, that whole stigma, sometimes works for married people. Okay, so so literally you can do inexpensive things like go to a park or just do a drive, a night drive with your partner. You never know how much they'll do. So definitely give that one-on-one -on -one time and date as much as your heart will allow you to, okay? So those are my five things that you can do that will definitely make the relationship a lot better. Um, if you like those tips and you think that those are some good tips and you're watching, definitely, I want you to use a hashtag from Golden Relationships. Hashtag how you felt about it and put in Golden Relationships. Because we're not just trying to fix, you know, work on our 2018 to have a better relationship. We want Golden Relationships, great relationships. And that can only come with trying to better yourself and better your 2018. God bless you guys. Amen. <laughs> Y'all, so that was some dope relationship advice for 2018. <laughs> now we are going to have a Dr. Shari Callister come up and give you guys some health tips um, about making your 2018 a little bit better. So come on, Dr. Callister. She's ready for war, ass. Okay. Give her a second. She comes. <laughs> Hi, hi everybody. I'm Dr. Shari Kalaker. I'm a family medicine physician. Um, I work at St. Vincent's on the north side off of Edgewood 1760, Edgewood Avenue West, if you want to come see me. Um, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about your health goals as far as the New Year is concerned, okay? Um, so the great thing that I love about being a family medicine doctor is that um, not only do we really focus on eating well and exercising and all those great things, but mental health is a big big um, proponent that I really, really push. So I'm really about the complete person. So I want you to be a complete person in 2018. Okay, sounds great. But we will start with the, with the easy stuff, the um, working out and eating and all that great things. So um, first, as far as eating is concerned, um, I know there's a lot of kind of vegan and vegetarian and should I give up meat and what do I have to do and all those great things. Um, to those to those things, I kind of say, do what works for you. Um, if you know you're, you eat meat with every meal, don't set an intention that starting January 1st, 2018, you're going to be a vegan because it's not going to work. It's not very realistic. But some people, it does work for them. It, cold turkey works great for some people. But for most people, I find that a gradual approach works a little bit better. <laughs> um, works a little bit better. So... I would encourage you if you're working towards veganism or a vegetarian that you start to give up things gradually. So let's say like um, you don't eat all kinds of meat. So maybe starting in January, you'll cut out red meat and, you know, get comfortable with eliminating red meat from your diet. And then kind of once you feel comfortable there, then you say, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to do pork anymore. And so, and so on and so on until you reach your goal of veganism. But I feel like sometimes we feel so pressured, like, oh, you know, I have to change this right now or things like that by society or whomever. And um, it's just not very realistic. So I encourage you to kind of do stepwise goals to get to where you want to as far as your health is concerned. Um, secondly, exercise. So exercise is a big thing. I don't really like going to the gym. It's a necessary evil for me. Um, but, <laughs> but it is good to kind of get some form of exercise, whether you're going up and down the stairs in your house, walking around your neighborhood, just moving in some way, shape, or form. So you should be moving 150 minutes um, every week. So and you can break that off however you want. You can do five days of 30 minutes or – you know, three days of however many, 150 goes into three, 50. So you can do <laughs> three days of 50 minute exercises, but at least 150 moving at a moderate pace where you're not like completely out of breath, but you're able to kind of hold a conversation, but still kind of feel like you're working at the same time. So that's the um, recommendation for exercise. Um, I, I definitely also, you know, the gym isn't the only way 
Yoga is great. Pilates is great. Anything where you're moving is is a good thing. So don't feel like you have to go to the gym and be on the treadmill and all that other stuff. Not necessary. The only thing that's necessary is you moving because if you don't move it, you what? Lose it. Okay? Yes. And then um, third thing, help relationships. So this is where we kind of get into the total, um, total person, right? So we all have especially as we're kind of reaching well for me i just turned 30 so kind of reaching this age of transition as far as like life and relationships are concerned and so in 2018 i really encourage everyone to really evaluate your relationships to see what is really serving you and what is really just only taking you not making you a better person um sometimes people that we've known forever can still be toxic people um, sometimes people that we've known forever, that we've been friends with forever, um, don't necessarily serve us in this space where we are right now. So it's really important that you evaluate those relationships that you have. Um, and you don't necessarily have to like cut people off. Like that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is evaluate. I mean, some people deserve. Okay. <laughs> some people do deserve to get cut off. They've got three, four, five, too many chances. Um, but some people, like I said, you, you do outgrow people. That does happen. So, you know, maybe not focus so much time and attention on trying to make that happen, but really try and focus on building new relationships that will serve you where you where God has brought you to um, at this point in your life. So um, that's a little tidbit about healthy relationships. Toxicity is real, okay? It is very, just like, you know, the food that you shouldn't be eating, there's a certain expiration date. Sometimes there's things that you shouldn't be dealing with when it comes to certain people after, after a certain time. It's just really bad for you, your physical health, as well as your mental health. So really, really do take some serious time to sit down and evaluate the toxicity that people may be bringing in your life, okay? And that kind of rolls into my, my fourth point, which is mental health. So um, mental health, I know it's kind of like the big, like mental health is the new black, basically. Um, but I think that it's important to understand that mental health isn't really just a fad. It is something that is just now people are comfortable talking about. It's something that has always existed, uh, but it's kind of been taboo. Um, so I would say don't be afraid, um, especially you can always start with just going to your primary care doctor and saying like, you know, something just doesn't feel right. You don't necessarily have to know or to label it yourself as depression or anxiety because sometimes depression or anxiety presents itself in ways that you don't necessarily think. Like you don't have to always be sad and crying all the time to be depressed or you don't have to be like just super everywhere all the time to be anxious. Sometimes you just not sleeping <laughs> or running your thoughts, um, not doing things that you usually like to do. Like if you usually like to go to yoga and then all of a sudden you just say like, i'm not really feeling good right now like those are signs leading toward that you may or may not be depressed and you have something else going on but just noticing your body noticing your actions and knowing when things aren't really um moving in the same way that they used to move go to your primary care and just say you know um something's really not Right, and you know, you guys can work through it and figure out where you guys want to move to next, whether it be therapy, be medication. Um, like I always say, therapy is definitely a personal decision. So if you're not ready for therapy, don't try to rush yourself into it. Um, but do know that if multiple people are suggesting therapy, it might be something you want to look into. Okay. Um, I think that's it as far as my uh, health goals for 2018. Um, if you want. To, like I said, so I work at the same as primary care, 1760 Edgewood Avenue West. If you want to come and see me, um, I do have my own blog, www.drmrs.com. And um, that's Dr. Mrs. on Facebook. And then this is Dr. Mrs. on both Instagram and Twitter. Thanks, guys. Yay. Thank you, Dr. Hallecker. That was super amazing, y'all. She's my doctor. She is the bomb, just so y'all know.
through the bone. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch gears <laughs> here um, now to a little bit about self-empowerment. Um, when it comes to self-empowerment, of course, I'm very big on that, um, mostly no offense, men. But when it specifically comes to women, because I feel like a lot of times as women, we are just labeled very insubordinate, very insignificant, um, and in most cases, in all cases, it's not true, and especially us being African-American women. We're, our, the views that people have about us isn't positive at all. Um, but when it comes to self-empowerment, this is for really everyone. It's for your goals for 2018. Um, these are just some techniques that I kind of found online um, to just help you kind of change your vision of who you are and if you do have low self-esteem or whatever the case may be. I kind of want to challenge you to just reprogram your mind to think differently and more highly of yourself. So what, of course, is... Uh, Right. What is self-empowerment? Self-empowerment literally is just you creating your own sense of self-worth. How you view yourself, having your holding yourself personally accountable, and also assessing the power that exists within you. A lot of times, I feel like we have so much untapped potential, so many things that are inside of us that never ever get a chance to be reawakened because sometimes we're afraid. But it, it comes with just you knowing who you are, and it starts with yourself. So I found some techniques um, according to bizmove.com. They are a small business guide. Um, they gave about eight techniques. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible with these. Um, but number one step that they suggested is that you start for um, where you are and take it one step at a time. When it comes to self-empowerment, you want to kind of just take a step back and think about where you are right now. A lot of times we're so focused on the present, what we have to do in the future, a few weeks from now or a month from now. But really, some you really just need to take time to think about where you are now. Take time to assess that. Also, think about the baggage that has brought you up until this point. Make peace with that. Make peace with everything that has happened um, in your past, things that continue to bother you or irritate you. Make sure you make peace with that, understand that, and then take a step back and just reassess who you are as a person. Um, sometimes I think we let things hold us back and sometimes we're so stuck in our own brokenness, but we're not concerned about becoming whole human beings. Um, being whole starts with you and it's not being about being codependent on somebody else, um, kind of improving your self-worth. Don't depend on other people. You can't depend on your relationship. You can't depend on your family members. You can't depend on your mom. You can't depend on anybody else to give yourself self-worth, of course, other than yourself. And the next point uh, that kind of goes along with number one is to think about all the things that irritate you, all of the things that limit you, all of the things that cause you to react, and really just sit down and think about that. And, um, of course, I'm kind of pointing out you really just getting to know yourself and understand yourself so that moving forward you'll have an idea of where you fall short and begin to fix that going forward. Number three is recognize that whatever you are experiencing in this moment is required for you to grow. Everything that we're going through, whether it's bad experiences or whatever the case may be, is needed. Like it shapes your perception. It shapes the person you are. A lot of times when people go through trials or tribulations or whatever the case may be, it's always the, the bad things that happen that make you into a better person. And what I like to say is that your test becomes your testimony. Your trial becomes your triumph at the, at the end of the day. Um, recognize that you are a larger part of a big picture. When you think about your purpose and your passion about who you are, it's not just about you. It's more so about your purpose and other people. Um, and until you understand and acknowledge that possibility that there's a greater plan, then moving forward, you won't be able to understand your self-worth and who you are. Number four is please stop comparing yourself to other people. We live in a society where Instagram, Twitter, Black Twitter, Facebook. <laughs> that's, that's for when you said picture yourself. So I <laughs> Good. That was good. 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 Knock that out. You're so crazy. So we live in a society where we're always comparing ourselves um because we see, you know, Susie and Ray Ray and all of them, you know, they're going on vacation. <laughs> These names. Y'all don't know Ray. No, okay, I'm sorry. Don't know Donovan. Ray. 
right. You know, thank you, know, Donovan, Brad. <laughs> so we see a lot of them. It seems like they're always going on vacations and achieving their dreams, and it always seems like we're taking the L. In reality, they're comparing themselves to somebody else who's comparing themselves to to somebody else. There's never a middle ground. So we literally just focus on running our own race. And like Anthony says all the time, staying in our own lane yes. and perfecting what we're meant to do, then it'll all work out. So when it comes to not comparing yourself, instead of adopting the mindset of comparison and competition, reprogram your mind to understand that there is room for your gifts, for your talent, mm -hmm. and your purpose. We live in such a society, um, what we call it, the crab pot society mm -hmm. <laughs> where everybody's in this little pot and we're all trying to crawl over each other but there's so much purpose and unity when you stick together like businesses and everything flourish when you partner up there's power and partnership always um and my last thing with that point about comparing yourself just picture yourself as a body we have our hands we have our our hands do what the hands are supposed to do our eyes do what they're supposed to do. Our nose do what they're supposed to do. All of these things individually, if they do their own part, then the whole body will be complete. So just acknowledge what you're good at, who you are, perfect that, and then everything else will come together. Um, number five says that it does not matter what happened to you or who did it. The only thing that matters is what you do about it. And for this, I'm just going to simply say we need to rid the victim mentality. I think as a society, we're always like, oh my gosh, why me? Why did it happen to me? Why did she do that to me? Or why did he do that to me? Or why was I this? Why was I that? Everybody has a story. Everybody has an excuse. But you can't just continue to walk around with this whole mindset like you're a victim. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. As long as you overcome that, as long as you have the victory within that, you've already overcome though don't walk around with this whole mindset that it shouldn't have happened to you learn from that experience and move on with your life because more than likely whoever has done the offending has already moved on with theirs so you need to learn how to move on with your life take it for what it is make peace with your past and also let whatever they did let that drive let whatever that is let that drive your passion your purpose and your power um, number six, do not operate holistically by opening um, up to other possibilities. That just simply means that there is always more than one way to solve a problem. Um, when it comes to you just learning who you are, think outside the box. Think unconditionally. Take the road less traveled and channel your creativity. You learn more about who you are and become more empowered when you understand um, that you discover your character by trial and error. Sometimes you got to mess up, sometimes you make mistakes. But every mistake you make, of course, you learn. Every mistake is a learning experience. It's never a loss. Only okay. yeah, a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, number seven is complete your unfinished business. Acknowledge that, one, we all have something that's unfinished, whether it's with a person, um, whether it's family issues, whether it's literally a business, or whether it's the good deed undone, we as a society need to learn how to finish. How to finish exactly what you started. Learn how to complete everything. And within that, to complete one one technique to even start completion is to just acknowledge your mistakes, um, acknowledge your wrongs, acknowledge your screw ups and everything that you've done. Make peace of that, of course. Also, just if you've wronged somebody else. It's simple. It really is simple. Literally, you can just go to them, hey, I'm sorry for what I've done. How can I make this better? Well, well it depends on what they do. <laughs> so not, Anthony, said, like, well, Anthony said it depends. <laughs> but what did Jesus say? Okay. <laughs> Listen, Dr. Calico wants you to, to be a holistic person. <laughs> it depends on what they did. Well, sometimes you can have this conversation with somebody. Yeah. And decide, just to have conversations so all my clear right. and easy for you. Just have, just have a conversation with that because I'm the kind of person like I can't okay. not <laughs> I can't not make peace with somebody. It's always something in me that doesn't feel right. Like I have to. And the last thing with that, once you've made peace with yourself, once you acknowledge what was done wrong, move on. Move on with your life. Become bigger and better. Learn from those mistakes and watch it all work out. Um, so
So number eight says, consider the wisdom of doing absolutely nothing. And I love this because I think when it comes to self-empowerment, when it comes to who we are as a society, um, we don't take breaks. Like we're constantly going, always on the go, um, especially Anthony, every other day. <laughs> Anthony, listen to this. <laughs> but seriously, um, I think we should take a break when necessary. Uh, taking breaks are definitely appropriate. And um, whenever you take a break, it gives you a time for restoration. What does restoration mean? Restoration means that you receive back more than what you've lost to the point um, where the final state is greater than the original condition. Like how awesome is that when you take rest, of course that means you're restored, that means like you have so much more energy, that means you can see yourself in a, a better and different light. And also um, doing nothing means sometimes doing nothing physically, doing nothing mentally, not doing anything at all. Um, understand also that there is a time for everything, okay? And lastly is um, daily affirmations. When it comes to self-empowerment, you feed, your mind will go off of whatever you feed it. Whatever you pour into it, whatever harvest you pour into it is whatever you'll reap in it. So if you're constantly waking up telling yourself that you're ugly, you're not beautiful, you'll never be anything, your mind is gonna continue to think that and that's not healthy. The healthier way is to wake up and affirm yourself. I will get this job. I will succeed. I will be better. I will be a great mother to my child. I will be the greatest entrepreneur. I will be all of these things. The more you continue to do that, the more you'll start to see that manifestation because I do believe that there are there is so much power in words that you speak. Um, whatever you manifest, whatever you put out into the world, I believe definitely will come back onto you. So just wake up every morning, write down your daily affirmations, let them be positive, and watch your mindset just change. <laughs> What is this? It's a black lady flying away. Oh, it's a black That's lady. A good one. Thank you. It's a black lady flying. Like <laughs> and then I didn't show y'all my little vision board. Do not laugh, okay? Okay, Mercy, okay, Quincy, don't laugh at my board. But it's simple. Um, it says 2018 you, and I have Easter Ray, which Quincy thinks this is my twin. I don't, I don't see it, but I do. And then I have Queen Eonce on here. But don't oh, share hope. Be beautiful. Own your blackness, be whole, glow up this year, and slay, repair, renew, and revive. All right, y'all, this is my piece for 2018 resolutions for self empowerment. And Anthony will be coming up next to talk about his goals, um, helpful tips, and stuff like that for business. So, for all of the small business owners, entrepreneurs, um, if you have the mindset to start your own business, Anthony will. Go ahead and get this a little bit about that. Then after that, we'll go ahead and close out, give away a prize, and then we will be done. So thank you guys so much. Happy New Year. Have a blessed 2018. So um, as you guys can see, as, as, so the good thing about this, as everybody comes up, they talk, and they get the information, I'm trying to fill in the vision board. So. When Dr. Calker started talking about health, I'm putting that up here so you can see that. I'll zoom in later on. But uh, we started talking about health. When you have, we're talking about, when Nessa was talking about date night, you know, we have the outfit up here. So that way you can kind of know that you can kind of keep a reminder every single day. Um, when, when, uh, uh, <laughs> oh God, Crystal. when Crystal was talking about the self-portrait, I put a portrait up here and I, it's an empty picture. It's a generic one that you get from the, the dollar, dollar store. Dollar tree. doesn't have to be a picture. If you want to put a picture of yourself, you certainly can. But that way you can kind of always make sure you appreciate your self-worth. Um, I put the carrots up here for health. For health. That's really good. <laughs> I also put <laughs> the flowers up here to remind you of the date night, the money that uh, Cyril talked about. Um, now, what we're going to talk about is in regard to a business. So when you manage your business, starting a business, a lot of people are starting business in 2018, which is perfectly fine. I appreciate people that are starting business. So, oh, thank you. So what we're gonna talk about is a couple things. We're gonna talk about key, four, key fe four key features. So starting a business, the main thing that I always wanna talk about is building a brand. So when we kind of look and see, here you go, use this. Building a brand. So the thing about business is everybody, the big, the, let's, let's skip all straight to the point. The thing about black businesses is that a lot of black businesses don't 
feel like there's enough space at the top for everybody. Anyways, there's a, so you might do the same thing that I do, and I partner with different companies all the time. And the thing that I do is I say, okay, well, look, I do this, you do this very well. These particular services, yeah, we are the same company, but we can come together and be able to do that. So when we start building a brand, we're building a brand so that way it keeps establishing on, okay, I'm going to keep coming back to this particular company because they do this on a continuous basis. They may go the little extra mile, and it may be a little bit of things that you might do. It may be when you sell your T-shirts. With your T-shirts, a little, a little trinket or something comes with everything, and a thank you note comes for every single time that you actually sell your, your T-shirts. Or, for example, if you sell food, okay, you sell food, and then you say, okay, well, listen, if I sell five meals, the sixth meal that I sell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stack them up, and I'm going to feed the homeless with that meal. So what you want to do as a business is always take the time out to stand out from other businesses, especially if you're all in the same lane. If you're all in the same lane, that's going to be the only way that you can kind of stand out. Because if you sell chicken fritters and Mark sells chicken fritters, well, y'all both sell chicken fritters. <laughs> that's just the way how it works. It's really going to be who opens up at what time and who's available when. But if you sell chicken sell chicken fritters but you sell chicken fritters and then you also give back to the homeless or give back or try to work on giving back to the community and that's your brand that's what you normally do people are going to be more inclined to go to you instead of going to mark and i'll tell you a good company that actually does that tom's every time you purchase a pair of tom's tom's gives a pair of shoes to a child in need every single that's time beautiful so you and that's the brand that's what they're known for their shoes are hella expensive. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I have, I have to buy, I have three kids and then I have a wife. So I have to buy five of everything when we want to match something. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, that's five different pairs of shoes. But in the, in the turn, I will go and buy those because I know that if, if I buy these five different pairs of shoes, these five different pairs of shoes are actually going to be going to five different extra people as well. And that's what I'm talking about build your brand. The second thing that we're going to talk about is invest in technology. That is the main thing. With today's, today's society, today's how everything works, it's all about some technology, being efficient, being strong, being fast, and, and really, 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 really putting yourself out there as far as understanding what your, your market is. So I tell people all the time, I think I had a meeting yesterday with, um, with another advertising and marketing company, shouts out Jay Floyd with uh, FNF Marketing. Woo! But we actually sat down and talked. And again, we, we partner together. We do the same, we do the same thing in, in the city, but we partner together. So with what we did was we sat down and I showed him exactly what was important about technology. I showed him how to be a little bit more efficient with it, how to stand out, how to test out technology. I'm all constantly when you when the government creates something, they have an R and D department. They if an R and D stands for research and development. That's, they spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on research and development. And the reason why is because they, they have the concept. So you, you already know that you want to get from point A to point B. You know how to get from point A to point B. But what you really want to figure out is, okay, how do I get to point A to point B faster and more efficient? And if you can figure out different ways to invest in technology, like, for example, if you're a graphic designer, I'll tell you now, Photoshop, Photoshop is a go-to for a graphic designer. Everybody knows that. But if you actually take the time out and look at all the different apps that are out there, there's Video Leap, there's Fuse. Um, a lot of people have seen me do a lot of different work, and everything is actually managed and done from my actual cell phone. A lot of people don't realize that. I don't ever – I can't carry my laptop and my tablet with me, but I do all of my advertising and marketing nine times out of ten from my cell phone. So I invest so much in technology – that way it just makes my life a little bit easier. I wake up in the morning, and, I, and I'll give you the honest truth. I wake up in the morning. <laughs> when I wake up, I wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. I've invested in an app that literally texts people for me. That's all it does. So when I have to reach out to my clients, boom, it texts my clients good morning every single day, Monday through Friday. So all I do is just wake up and turn the phone on. So that takes care of one. Two, I invest in so that way – when a sale goes throughout on my Facebook, if something gets done and a sale goes through my Facebook, okay, 
well, I invested in some technology so that way, and that's Square, and um, also the other uh, one is Stripe. So that way, when a sale goes through, through Facebook, the sale in turn puts the information to my Stripe account. My Stripe account in turn goes to my distributor for them to make my product, and then in turn, all the funds go to my Square account. And I'm literally sitting at a desk with my primary job the whole entire time. So imagine if you're, I'm sitting in one spot for eight hours a day, but when a sale goes through on my Facebook, everything is working out. So I'm still getting paid my normal eight hours as I'm working for my, my primary job, but everything else kind of sets up so that way, okay, boom. I'm actually making money with sales through technology and I'm not managing it at all. All I did was set it up one time. So that's what we're talking about as far as make sure you understand about investing in technology. The third thing that we want to talk about is consistency. Yes. That is the main thing with businesses, especially with black businesses. The heart, the hardest thing is being consistent. So the reason why I started with technology before I started with consistency is if you invest in technology, it would help you to be consistent. That's the main thing. You better so yes. the way how it works is okay. Look, can we pass the offering? <laughs> so, <laughs> offering. Okay. Hey guys, right, we're taking so. offering. When you look at it, okay, here we go. Uh, like I said, in the morning, I text my clients every morning. My clients now. Now the secret's out. So if I manage your company, you know I don't personally text you every morning. My app does, but the way how it works is okay. Cool. Stay consistent. Stay consistent with your brand. Stay consistent with, with the technology. And stay consistent on who you are. If you are open Monday through Friday mm -hmm. from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I call you at 3.30 on Wednesday, you should be open. Yes. yes. That's just the way how it works. Yes. Or, now, and I've been guilty of this, too. I, recently, I actually was guilty of this because I've been traveling when it came up to the holiday season. Finally took a little bit of time off. <laughs> but I took some time off. Now, for me personally, that was, that was extremely difficult. My wife actually asked me to, to take some time off too. So that was extremely difficult for me for everything that I do. But the good thing about it is if you set up these appointments and you set up the time and you set up the consistency, okay, well, listen, normally I'm, I'm always going to be able to fulfill an order or to schedule an appointment or meet an appointment. But there's points in time where I may not be able to do it. But as long as you're consistent on what you constantly do, when you do get a chance to take the time out, your clients will still be there, and they will understand. And that's the way how it kind of works. You might lose, you might lose a couple customers because they're looking for you. All right, well, this is the holiday season. I need this done. You always come through. Listen, I, I know I always come through, but this time I gave you a heads up. I told you I wasn't going to be available. This is the way how it kind of works and go from there. So when you start to take the time out and review consistency, and you say, okay, I'm always consistently making sure my orders are complete. I'm always consistently opening at the correct times and making sure I close at the correct times. I'm always consistently making sure I follow up with my clients. Okay, listen, if I put the order in, I follow up with the client, and then I manage the client, and then I get the, the item sold and everything is done, a lot of people stop the transaction there. That's not where the transaction should stop. You should then, in turn, keep a database of everybody who you've sold, and then, in turn, email them again. Let them know what sales that you got going on, what new products that are out there. And again, if you invest in product, or you invest in a little bit of technology, that will take care of it for you. So that's what I say about being consistent. That's the main thing that you need to keep. And the last thing that I always, always, always preach, always preach, is drive. You have to have drive. A lot of people, what happens is they get these businesses and then they realize, okay, well, listen, this isn't necessarily what I thought it would be, which is perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. But the thing is, you have to be able to continue to go forward. There's been plenty of times, and Crystal can account for it, um, there's plenty of times where we're creating something, we make an event, we take the time out to spend, we spend time, energy, and money doing something. And people don't show up or it's not what we expected. And then here's the thing, you keep going. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm just gonna stop because you know what? People are just, they don't care, they're too defiant, and they're not, you know, especially in Jacksonville, like, oh, everybody, that's one of the things that I hear from business all the time. I don't try to put my marketing in, in Jacksonville because a lot of people just don't 
oh, well, I don't, Duval does not take care of its own city and they don't support, which is not true. Duval definitely does support. You just have to make sure you're constantly consistent and you're constantly keeping up with what's going on in Duval. But you have to have that drive. You can't start this out, do this for six months, and then expect everything to just explode. I can tell you one thing. Oprah got fired at 32. Now she's a multi-billionaire. Um, you have some of these actors. Shoot, Mark Wahlberg got arrested and then in turn didn't start his acting career until he was 26. And now he he's probably one of my favorite actors just because of Ted and Ted 2 alone. But those are the greatest movies please, on earth. Please not. Disregard no, those are the good movies. Those are good movies. Not. But but those key factors are gonna be the main thing. Just keep your drive, keep going. There's gonna be points in times, and that goes to exactly what Coco was saying and Dr. Callagher. There's gonna be points in times where y'all feel like it's just not enough. And you feel like, all right, I'm just gonna give up. I'm tired. I'm I'm tired of this and I'm, I'm tired of keep going. The sales ain't going the way I expected. I'm just gonna shut it down and go do my own business. That's not the case at all. Keep fighting. Keep going. That next sale might be the one that gets you right over the edge or might give you the drive to keep going more. That next event might be that event that just blows up and the whole city comes out and then you're just making revenue on top of revenue. That, that's the key. So those are my four key points for the small businesses in 2018. That's definitely something that I'm working on personally. Um, where are my little pictures? See, I got the pink gloves for keep fighting um oh and then the last thing is volunteer you have services you have these gifts that you have and there's those people that are out here that honestly they may not be able to afford your services but if you're comfortable with giving back and volunteering and say okay well you know what this is what i do i can help out the community do you understand how much how much that affects your brand you understand how much that builds you as a person. So always try to find opportunities to volunteer. This one, I'm, I'm actually going to take a picture and post it on um, Emerging Black's page and in Black Spark Cafe so you guys can take a look at that and see it. But that's all I got for 2018. I'm, I'm going to work on being petty, but they can stop being petty, but they have nothing in these magazines for stop being petty. Um, okay, what's that? Work. That's true. That's true. But I'm going to put these up here, and then Chris is going to come up here, and then we're going to do the giveaway. And then I think that's it. Give card. Ooh, it's a twenty-five dollar gift card. Ooh, you so. Listen, we give them. <laughs> <laughs> so for everybody that's listening, we're kind of looking through and monitoring and watching it. So um, we definitely appreciate your time. We do a lot of giveaways. Yeah. We have our events. Um, we give out gift cards. We give out. That's pretty much it. We just give out gift cards. <laughs> Wait, Ian. Um, the very first mix that we did, he gave somebody a free session, like. Four marketing and oh, I did. And stuff, so. I did do that. Oh, yeah. that's what. Um, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember what Chris was talking about? Yeah, Wally, I got you. I could put. I almost no. You were supposed to reach out to me. See, I'm being petty. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, you can get, get I know, that petty. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But um, so all of our listeners and our viewers here now, what we're gonna do is we're definitely gonna give out a um, a twenty five dollar gift card. We'll go through the list. I see Mirica, Q. Marcia. Mar Tiffany oh, Renee. Is it, is it Mirica? Marcia. I said it's Marcia. Oh, okay. My best friend. Hey, best friend. Isn't that one of her birthday? No, that was Ashford. Oh, birthday. okay. Well, happy birthday, Ashford, for lady. Um, Tammy, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll do a drawing. We'll pick it out later on this afternoon, and then we'll post it out to see. Look at this chin trying to join in. <laughs> In there real quick. Um, but we'll post out who's the winner of the drive, and then what we'll do is we can get in contact with you, uh, either Facebook or Instagram or well, I don't use Twitter. Do you use Twitter? Um, we have an emerging black Twitter page, Anthony. I don't Anthony. use the Instagram and uh, the Facebook. Keep up with that page, but it's, it's there. I do. Wow. All right, so I got y'all's names down. Once again, y'all, thank you so much for joining. We pray that you at least walk away with something that she did not know before. Um, thank you, Cyril, for your financial advice. Thank you, Dr. Callagher, for your health advice. Thank you, my baby Nessa over here. That's me. Um, for your relationship advice, thank you, Anthony, for oh, business. God. I'm going to thank myself because I got a little deep, you know. I'm, yes, you did. You better tell mm -hmm. my, the Lord touched my heart. Yes. All right, y'all. Um, so once again, have a blessed 2018. Thank you, God.
guys again for joining. Oh, and, I, was, I was breaking my my watch with this thing over here. That's my and album. happy new year. See y'all later. Woo! Yeah. More more black y'all come on up so, can, so they can all see yeah. us. Listen. And then we'll take a, a big picture so that way everybody can see. Come on, Tashina's crafts. If you need anything awesome, definitely holler at her. If you need a doctor, this one here is the bomb. Hi. Wait, so you can see, um, All right. You can see. Bye. Bye. Okay, how are we eating? You're supposed to do your thing. What's your, what's your thing? So, what's do you know thing? Do you know my thing? Do you know my thing? What's my normal thing? We are um, Morgan Black. We are always talking about the latest trends in Black. Welcome to the, what is it? <laughs> <laughs>